I recently had a conversation with a new landowner here in Missouri who had gotten conflicting advice on whether they should remove the thick stands of eastern red cedar on their property. Now this is a tree that kind of confounds categories. Is it an invasive pest? Is it a beneficial native plant? Or is it an economic resource? This uncertainty ties into even deeper questions about what it even means to be a native or invasive plant and what role people should play in managing ecosystems and landscapes. This is a relevant question both for private landowners and for the users and managers of public land. Cedars are well adapted to conditions in their native range, which covers much of the central and eastern U.S. Their berries are an important food source for some birds, and their dense growth provides cover for various wildlife like deer, as shown by this deer trail, and the way these does dart into thick cedar cover when they detect me. Cedar's thick evergreen canopies provide a moist environment for mosses and can even help stabilize eroded landscapes by intercepting intense rainfall throughout the year. For example, this gullied out area is a result of poor farming practices, but the thick regrowth of cedar following abandonment has suppressed further erosion. In this viewpoint, leaving cedars in place or even encouraging their growth is beneficial. On the other hand, cedars rapidly colonize disturbed or abandoned land quickly growing up into single-species thickets that suppress biodiversity. This behavior is quite similar to non-native invasive species like bush honeysuckle or autumn olive. Their growth pattern makes them difficult to remove, and their high resin content makes them something of a fire risk in hot summers. They're also a reservoir for cedar apple rust, a fungus that can harm not only apple trees, but also native hawthorns, a diverse set of flowering shrubs that include the Missouri State Flower. Volume 3 of Steiermark's Flora of Missouri notes that in Missouri, hawthorns are much less numerous in nature than they were 100 years ago, in part due to increasing abundance of eastern red cedar, because hawthorns are susceptible to cedar apple rust. In this viewpoint, aggressively removing cedars increases the potential for forest or grassland biodiversity, since they weren't necessarily a large part of these ecosystems prior to European disruption. Cedar trees have all sorts of uses if you're willing to put some work in. The branches can be chipped for garden mulch or dried and used to enhance controlled burns. Smaller trunks make excellent fence posts, as the heartwood is rot resistant, and larger trunks can be milled into attractive or fragrant lumber for indoor projects like shelving or chests, or outdoor buildings like sheds and decks. It's our view that virtually all ecosystems are human influenced, so the question isn't really whether to manage cedar, but how. For example, one reason cedars have become so widespread is the suppression of fire across their range. Young cedars are easily killed by fire, which used to be a commonplace occurrence in both prairie and woodland regions. Fire was used by Native American cultures to shape ecosystems into more human beneficial forms, for example by improving prairie grasses used by game species, or to open woodlands to make nut collection easier. European disregard for Native American land management practices led to major changes. Fire suppression, overgrazing and overplowing, large-scale clear-cutting, and the fragmentation of land all disrupted or destroyed existing ecosystems and allowed aggressive cedars to expand into new niches. Our current cedar-friendly landscape is just another human creation, and choosing to leave cedars in place isn't leaving it more natural, it's just another management choice. As the rock band Rush once sang, if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. So as you're considering how cedars should be managed, ask yourself, what will be the consequences? Will leaving them in place create the landscape you want? For example, are erosion control or wildlife cover among your priorities? Here, cedars are fulfilling these roles. Or do the trees have historical or other value in place? Here, these large cedars stand sentinel over the primitive headstones of an old cemetery. Will removal encourage erosion or other invasives? Can the cleared area be maintained? Here, cedar clearing resulted in a pulse of undesirable invasive shrubs like this blooming autumn olive, as well as increased runoff. If you clear cedars, do you have a plan for what happens next? Will using them be cost or time effective? Are you willing to put in the work to harvest rather than just remove the resource? Can you sell or use the results? We've long preferred to produce usable products from our cedar management rather than just burning or abandoning the trees we choose to remove. Eastern Red Cedar. Love it, hate it, or use it? Our answer to this is all of the above. Where it's overabundant or particularly aggressive, removing it's often the right approach, even if it is technically a native plant. 
where it fits into land management plans. Leaving it alone can create an attractive and well-adapted ground cover with benefits for wildlife habitat and food. Where possible, using it can help balance the tension between these two extremes by recognizing the value of cedar as both a natural and a human resource.